So what are 10 amazing things that happen when you stop snacking? When I was first diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, my doctor told me that one of the best things that I could do was to stop having big meals. So like a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, instead have smaller meals throughout the day and plenty of snacks. And he told me that this would help to control my insulin levels and help to manage my diabetes. What? This doctor, and in fact, the nurses I was seeing as somebody who was initially diagnosed with di gestational diabetes could not be further from the truth. And in fact, this is why I feel doctors should not be teaching their patients about nutrition and leave the nutrition up to the professionals. Perhaps you are in the same position with insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes, and you've been told the same thing. Before we get to the 10 amazing things that happen when you stop snacking, I want to briefly share with you what happens when you are snacking. And I promise I will get to the 10 amazing things that happen when you stop snacking soon. Hang in with me because you don't want to miss these things as they could honestly save your life. It's important to understand why we shouldn't be snacking first, especially if we have insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes already, or you think you might have insulin resistance. One may try to argue that there are healthy snacks and unhealthy snacks, and while that might be partially true, we still need to look at what happens each time we snack. So each time we eat, we're consuming a meal that probably contains some carbs, maybe some proteins and fats and some sugars, and each time we eat, our blood sugar levels increase. So it could increase a lot or maybe just a little. But either way, our pancreas senses that we need to send insulin into the system to pick up the sugar out of the blood and send it off into the cells. We don't have to be consuming an unhealthy meal in order for our blood sugar levels to go up. It will increase anyways after a meal somewhat. And so for the average person who's having their breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then they may be having snacks in between, and even if the snacks aren't that unhealthy, the pancreas will still release insulin and after the meal and it will help to bring the blood sugar levels down by taking the sugar from the blood and then putting it to the cells. But if we are constantly snacking throughout the day, I'm sure you can imagine what happens is if someone's having a regular meal with no snack in between, their blood sugar level will increase, insulin will kick in, as released, you know, from the pancreas, and then the blood sugars will then slowly start to go back down, and everything will start to normalize after a period of about two hours. And so often people, if they're checking their blood sugars, will wait about two hours from their meal to check their blood sugar level. But in somebody who is having their breakfast, then a snack, then lunch, and then a snack, and then dinner, and then a snack, you can see what happens is that there's very little time for the body to return to that sort of normalized state. We're having snacks and meals all day long. So what's happening is the body barely gets the chance to have the blood sugar levels return to normal, and then we're starting to put more food into the system. So it beats me why any doctor would want to tell somebody that you should have several small meals throughout the day and lots of snacks. This doesn't even make common sense. And for somebody who has insulin resistance um, and maybe even type 2 diabetes, it doesn't mean that the person is not producing enough insulin. In fact, what often happens is that the person has developed a condition known as hyperinsulinemia. So we're, the body is always trying to push out more insulin. So basically, you're, you have sugar in the blood and then the pancreas is releasing insulin. Insulin's trying to get the uh, sugar from the blood and into the cells. And after time, there's so much sugar coming in and, there, and there's so much insulin going that the cells become resistant to receiving the sugar. And so then we develop insulin resistance. And so we're not low in insulin, we're actually quite high in insulin. And what I mentioned in an earlier video that I did is often people will go for a period of up to 10 years before ever being diagnosed with type two diabetes. And so they may be having insulin resistance and may have small symptoms and may not even be aware of it. But by the time they've developed the type 2 diabetes, there could be so much going on in their body in terms of damage. This is why it's super important to understand 
what happens when you are snacking and the 10 things that happen when you don't. What are some of the things that you experience when you have insulin resistance? Let's just touch on those quickly. You may be experiencing cognitive issues such as brain fog, anxiety, depression, anger. You may have nerve damage in the form of peripheral neuropathy. So you may be experiencing pins and needles in your feet, in your hands. You are more likely to suffer from a heart attack or stroke. You may go blind. And in fact, in the United States, diabetes is the leading cause for blindness. And this may even develop before somebody is even diagnosed with diabetes. 60 to 70% of diabetics have nerve damage. And this could be in the form of peripheral neuropathy, as I mentioned earlier, but it may also be in the nerves of the heart and you may experience a silent heart attack. There is also a definite connection now that's been made between having high blood sugars constantly and type two diabetes and Alzheimer's disease. You may develop fatty liver or fatty pancreas. And if you're in childbearing years, you may even experience uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, and that affects your fertility. You could end up with kidney issues up to and including kidney failure. So now this leads me to the 10 amazing things that happen when we stop snacking. You will begin to immediately lower your insulin levels and you will stop feeling hungry so often. Often times that people have insulin resistance, their hormone leptin, which tells them that they're full, is masked basically. And so they're always feeling constantly hungry. That desire to eat will be lessened. Your hormone leptin will become more sensitive and it will tell you that you're full. You will lose weight, especially fat, because insulin blocks fat weight loss. You will have less brain fog, anxiety, depression, anger, aggression. If you are insulin resistant and on your way to type 2 diabetes, you will immediately lessen the chances of that happening. You may also be experiencing a lot of gas, bloating, heartburn. Because there's nerve damage, you may have developed a condition called gastroparesis. And so that will be reduced and hopefully reversed. Your hormones will become better balanced and you'll begin to reverse the damage that you may have caused to your organs by having high insulin levels. You'll reduce your chances of having a heart attack. Your skin will clear up. So if you're experiencing acne, insulin levels will be dropping and therefore androgen levels will drop and your skin will be improved. You'll reduce overall inflammation. Your body won't be in a constant fed state, which prompts immune system activity and results in transient inflammatory response. So I'm going to give you a hint here, and I know some people will have a hard time going from snacking and eating all the time to stopping the snacking, and, and over time, you will be able to do that. But the two things that you can consume that don't cause an insulin spike are fiber and fat. So if you feel the need to, that you must have a snack in between a meal, I would encourage you to have something that is fat like an avocado or something or fiber you can have plant fiber like a salad or whatever and to, just to try and satiate yourself if you're feeling a little bit hungry instead of turning to maybe popcorn and ice cream i hope this video has been helpful and i do hope that it will help you on your way to reducing insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes and i do look forward to seeing you again next time